Be advised, mature content ahead. This podcast is brought to you ad-free thanks to the Legion of Demons at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. If you like what you hear, there's much more at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. Join the Legion. That's patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. And now the show. How do you do? Just a word of friendly warning. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to, uh, well, we've warned you. What? Ah! We're doing Scream Kings. This that, is a weird one, though. A scream. I think. Because the king we're, we're Scream Caning doesn't appear until like two thirds of the way into this till, movie. Until most of it. That's well, true. It goes with our previous movie. Uh, Where he's only in the first third. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. we're giving you these little doses. So the third movie is going to be in the middle. <laughs> middle it's just going to be in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're doing Barbarian. The Scream King is Justin Long. Barbarian. Yeah, he finds his way into a lot of horror movies. He does. Yeah. Which is, uh, he's one of those comedy guys that's a really good fit in horror. He is. And he often plays the same kind of guy. In the last couple I've seen, like Barbarian oh. and this the Neil LeBute vampire one, I can't remember the name of, um, it is very much two riffs on the same and character. tusk don't forget tusk i haven't seen tusk oh well i just spoiled something for you oh that's okay but it's not re- i mean it's just uh, i'm sure all of our listeners have seen tusk it's a similar kind of character yeah so it's interesting just, but i mean it's it won't i mean you'll know that in the first minute so oh, it's, okay. it's not like something that you're i was thinking about watching by. that this week it's, i like it a lot yeah it's yeah, kevin smith right i don't yeah. like it it's just very depressing <laughs> yeah i uh, i loved it i would have loved it well i won't say anymore but I like <laughs> oh, it a, a lot. Oh, okay. I, there, yeah, I like it a lot, but something prevented me from loving it. Oh. It's an ability to love you back. Mm-hmm. I understand. Yeah. So closed off. <laughs> uh, Andy's going to review the roulette movie this week. It's called Leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Patreon.com slash NOTLP. We have Origins 234 from July of 2011, right when gay marriage was legalized in New York State that same week. Whatever happened to Baby Jane? We did whatever happened to Baby Jane. She got married to Baby Jill in yeah. New York. There you go. They can finally be together and everything just calmed down around that place. Yeah. Everyone got along. She got out of that chair. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish it had a happy ending, huh? Don't those ladies deserve a happy ending after all the suffering and stage momming they had to put up with? Yeah. Well, they didn't get one. Been a much better movie. Yeah. If they just got along and things went really smoothly. <laughs> They're just a couple of sisters supporting each other. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like a more of like a terms of endearment to yeah. vibe. Um that wasn't cheerful either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but it was but at least they were there for each other in the end. These uh these ladies did not like each other one bit. But no. who wants to watch a, uh, two old ladies get along? That's not fun. Golden Girls was four l- ladies getting along, and it was great. That uh, Grace and Frankie is pretty good. I've heard that's good. Uh, it's y- pretty good. I love Lily Tomlin a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's it's mostly for, she. you know, it's it's okay. It's, it's for older ladies, is that what you're going to say? It's very parenthood it's, with an yeah. older, you've seen, have you seen <laughs> yeah, it? It's, um... Not for us, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like it. Yeah, same. But it's just a, not our demo. You know what's funny though? Colin loves it. Oh, well, loves it. Yeah, you never know like what's going to connect. Yeah, Colin's a twenty-something. It's very. Man. Um, He's twenty-three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was it's, surprised. It's very CBS, if you know what I mean. Yeah, CB like. <laughs> yeah, they they tackle like. Um, like old people's sexuality and and gay issues but in a very cbs way yeah it okay. felt ve- i i i concur like i said it felt very parenthood to me but aged up all right w- with but but a lot of the same like you have generations of people but this is focused shouldn't we build each other up is what frank and gracie says whereas whatever happened to baby jane says eat the rat eat the rat or the bird was you, it a bird or a rat it's a rat it's a, a rat yeah so they're very different 
Mm-hmm. But it'd be great to see a remake of whatever happened to Baby Jane with Lily Jane Tom. Tom and Lily <laughs> Tom. I love that shit. Well, who's who? I couldn't agree who's more. Who's in the wheelchair? In the wheelchair? I feel like I want Lily Tomlin to play that part and Jane Fonda to be Baby Jane. Can we get her? Can we get her some like kind of more modern, uh, modern means of trick? Can we? What get if she some, has like one of those those suits, like, like an, an exoskeleton? Avatar? Yeah. Oh, yeah, or an avatar, like a mech suit. <laughs> yeah, like the mech suit that uh, what's his nuts uses at the end of Avatar, or like Ripley has. Yeah, and uh, and she she just tears the staircase completely out of the house with it, and then the other sister falls. I would like enjoy in a that. money pit. Yeah, It'd be awesome. Um, so Patreon, we talk about that. Uh, topic Hanna, we're going to put these boys in the hot seat this week. Oh, shit. And uh, we'll see what random questions we can find. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> so hot. Uh, well, am I missing anything? Uh, that's, ups? That's, all the, that's all the news that's fit to print. We had a very sad little lonely meetup, but we used it to workshop a story that Fozzie's writing. Oh. So it was a productive, we how spent like an hour. How was it sad? It was like four of us. Fozzie, <laughs> I'm st- I don't think that I've forgotten your cover. I'm, I'm working on it. It's been yeah. really busy at work. And yeah. I know that sounds like an excuse, but it has in a, in a way that is really annoying to me because I haven't been able to do <laughs> my normal creative stuff because they've been expecting me to work. We're gonna have to find a way out of that for you. Well, I'm, I'm, well, we're all working on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. I'm there, and I'm waiting for you. That and we're we'll joining together. Like, oh, we're working on it. Oh, well, we are. We're, 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 uh, we're trying. We're trying. We're trying to come up with stuff. But I mean, I, you still feel like you don't have enough time, but you, you're like, at least I have the 24 hours in the day to be creative if I if I can. Well, and I, I still, I mean, I, I still have time. Like today, I had some time, but I'm also working on. I have to get. I'm I'm having my book republished and I'm having to put the manuscript together and I'm ba- I'm going over all of the stories and tightening them up. These lonely places. These lonely places. I'm, Thank you. You're welcome. You can't get it online right now because it's unpublished since it's being republished. But uh, there's a lot. They're long. The old ones are really long. <laughs> and so uh, it's taking me a while. And if I have to do work... Well, that's just, it keeps me from that. Yeah. And that's not right. Not in this world. Not in this world. Uh, I started reading a book because of Amy. She listens to page seven and some, they have a lot of creatives on there. And somebody was talking about a book called The Artist's Way. Yeah. And I couldn't get my hands on The Actual Artist's Way, but the author of it like rewrites it for different groups over and over again, I guess, so she can keep getting paychecks. Like The Warrior's Way. Yeah. Like for so-and-so. And I'm reading the one that's kind of for retired people. Chicken super artists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's basically what it is. It's like, a, you know, they do these things every day and, you know, don't go crazy. Don't burn out. Yeah. And, uh, but it has a little bit of a religious overtone to it, mm. uh, which I get, you know, sure. those things are connected, but, um, it's just funny that this one that was aimed at retirees actually fits who, where I am in my life more than the regular book would. And it was what I settled for, you know, but they're like, it's middle-aged people. I'm like, oh shit, I do fall more into this. I group. was about to say, well, you're not as far off. As yeah, I mean, you're further off than I am, but not by much. Yeah. So, um, so I I feel like that was actually kind of like an affirmation to be like, yeah. oh, I am this age. Nice. It's okay. Accept it. I'm gonna roll with this version of this this uh, method and see how it goes. Oh. But uh, yeah. All right. That's fun. It is fun. Andy uh, did some creative stuff yesterday. He, he made me the most delicious shrimp. <laughs> it's so creative with shrimp. I think cooking is the height of art. <laughs> we had shrimp too. Elise actually made uh, some really amazing. Well, I'm not saying yours wasn't really amazing. I'm saying she, for a, me. We have a shrimp off. She, <laughs> we, we made. Oh, did a, you know that sucking toes is called shrimping? I didn't know that. That's ah, cool. I didn't know that either. Because I guess sh- toes look like shrimp. Yeah, they're shrimpy. I yeah. don't want to <laughs> yuck anyone's young. <laughs> I've learned something today. Do they people put cocktail sauce? Yeah, on they them? put garlic butter on it and yeah. peel the sh- <laughs> peel the toes. All you can, <laughs> what about all you can eat time at Red Lobster? Well, it's just a, it's uh, a line of it's just a line of feet. This is <laughs> one. Oh. Ooh, that looks nice. The one with the big the big toe, <laughs> the huge toe. I want that one. What did you do with your shrimp? Oh, I just seared it in uh, Old Bay and mm. garlic butter. That sounds so, so good. Much garlic, it was so good. We recreated a pizza I had at Mellow Mushroom uh, with you guys. I saw a picture on the Discord. Yeah, w- yes, with with shrimp, andouille, blue cheese, uh, chicken, a bunch of shit, bunch of gumbo stuff. Yeah, but in pizza form, and uh, it was 
you would be it was not on either a whole wheat crust or one that resembled one it was on a keto crust Sorry, i have trauma from that that's place. okay i understand i understand i just thought that it was a really good flavor combination and it stuck with me and Andy so. hates unprocessed flour yeah it's his number one enemy here's the thing when i ate the melon mushroom pizza i was like this is really good and then I was reading it. It's like we used un- unbleached flour. You would like, you'd have been better. You would have probably been more okay with like it's pig anus, yeah, mm-hmm. than unbleached flour. Is my guess. Yes, because um, I don't like being lied to yeah. in terms of flour. <laughs> sure, he felt betrayed, and I understand. Yeah. You but gotta, you gotta love a stoner themed pizza joint, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. But this was a way better version, and uh, so it was good. So we all had good shrimp. Yeah. Yeah, well, me, me, me and Freddie had a bachelor's night because Amy's in, yeah, in Niagara Falls with her mom right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bachelor's so, night. So we had a date. We How? watched Barbarian and ate steak and shrimp together. How are your smoked potatoes? Oh, they're excellent, man. Potatoes. I you love them. Potatoes. I get the I get the skin all crisped up. Really apply the heat. Heat that shit get up. Get them all fluffy in the middle. Mm-hmm. What a manly conversation talking about grilling. Yeah, potatoes, yeah. potatoes, <laughs> meat crustaceans bottom feeders keto pizza crust yeah <laughs> sucking toes that's all that's all very manly stuff yeah man last time i was at long john's i forgot my cocktail sauce again Ooh. it's the second time i've had shrimp in a week by the way man i haven't uh i haven't been to, i mean i'll never be at long john's again but i haven't been in uh over a decade yeah, yeah. they have they have options but why bother i don't need that yeah I'm just like, you'd be better off cooking at home probably because I can't imagine that their keto-friendly options are very good. No. Um, I was talking to somebody about the Impossible Whopper, a friend of mine who's vegan, and he's like, they just throw it and cook it in the animal fat yeah. any, anyway. And I'm like, oh, they do? I didn't know that. A lot of places do that. You got to check. If you're, if you're hard, like, be careful if you're, yeah, if yeah. you're trying to be vegan. I, I don't think that uh, Burger King is scraping down the grill after every That's use. what he said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talking to Dave, he was pretty mad about it. McDonald's fries are not vegan. Oh, yeah. If you think they are, he had a mellow mushroom moment. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I get it, man. I get. It. I wouldn't want that either. If I were doing vegan, I wouldn't want them to be like, "Hey, this is going to just cohabitate with the meat." Mm-hmm. You might as well be eating meat at that point. You might as well, because then you get the delicious flavor of meat. God, I love meat. That's yeah, good, but I understand if, it's, especially for moral reasons, uh, if you feel yeah. bad about it, you definitely want to not have anything to do with it one day i'll have my brain reprogrammed so that i won't want meat i'll always want meat but i feel like they could probably burn it like with a cotter like get a like a cauterized part of my brain that craves meat and then then we can stop killing animals Mm. but until then um the drive is too strong Mm. and uh, (laughs) it's like a hannibal electric thing where he's gonna cut it open in front of you while you're awake and take the meat part out like the Ray Liotta scene. I mean, you know, we're going to be eating crickets soon, man. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You hear about, you hear that Kelly? When, um, uh, eventually when Earth can't sustain meat anymore, we're going to be eating bugs. Pretty sure. I, I'm, I'm hoping that that's after I've left this plane of existence. I think the same thing a lot. Isn't yeah. that terrible? Well, I have that thought about a lot of things. Yeah. I'm Sorry. Generations coming. Well, I, what are you going to do about it? Right. Are you going to stop it? No, that's, that's where I'm at, too. I'm just like, you know what? It's like, I'm just one man. What can I do? I'm going to ride these years I have left out eating garbage. <laughs> it's, up to, it's, up to every, it's up to the young people now. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I got way off track there. I'm sorry. I started thinking about Is food. banter ever on track? No, that's true. Um, yeah. So maybe we should just dive into roulette then. Yeah, let's well, leave. Is this. there anything you want for the top? Let's leave this segment and go I, to the next one. I want to say Banter Everon, though, is a great D&D character name. <laughs> is he a bard? That's what I heard when he said his Banter Everon track. I heard Banter, Banter Everon. Everon. That is a good D&D name. So, and we got to get back to D&D. I was just talking about this with Elise because we started to put together a game. Yeah, I have everything sitting in the other room. So, uh, so we got to work that back in. We have options. Yeah. D and D options laid out before us. Options. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. We'll be right back with the rest of the show. Hello, boys and girls. It's time for straight to video Russian roulette.
21? What? Are you looking for someone? September 22nd, 2002, I was abandoned at a cemetery in Oakville, Massachusetts. I was wrapped in this. Your band was on tour in my town that night. Hunter, I'm not your mother. So that's Christian, your father, and that's your mom, Anna. Did they worship the devil or something? Do you know Anna Norheim? Why? She was my mother. Our family has lived on this land for five generations. Does it feel familiar? My family has kind of a dark past. My aunt, she slid her wrists in the bathtub. My older sister disappeared when I was four. There's an evil there. Don't go there. You can't trust those people. Something is wrong. Knows about your trip. Are you helping me? I think I feel a bit dead. I feel like something wants me to leave. All right, Andy. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Really? Okay, this movie is called Leave, and I wish it did. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. That is me. I'm Jim right Somebody now. Somebody called the burn unit. First, <laughs> I was like, leave. Then I was like, go. Oh, shit. Then I was like, scram. <laughs> and I was finally like, get the fuck out. That's this, it. That's what they should have called this movie. Because <laughs> that's what I was wanting this movie to do. This is not welcome in your home. <laughs> <laughs> Just go. <laughs> Uh, it did not pick up social cues that you're, you know, you're packing up and cleaning up and they're, they're still lingering around. Yeah. It's asking for if you can open up another bottle yeah. of wine. It's like, hey, you want to start watching this? Like, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the, so um, it's really long. Well, it's not really long, but it felt really long. And this, this movie does the worst thing a movie can do is bore you. Uh, at least uh, like, that is the worst thing. Yeah, you know, like can do. you know, bad movies. At least they're entertaining because they're so bad they're fun. Yeah. yeah, this is just boring. Yeah, and it's like you know how um, you can forgive certain things if movies are good. Like uh, you don't pick pull out the strings like yeah. Barbarian. If you start pulling out the strings of Barbarian, the movie will fall apart. Yes, but everything else around it was so good that you don't you you forgive it. Right. This one had so many things that weren't un- un- unnecessary. Uh, first of all, she, you, hear, you heard the accents, right? I did. Uh, but the girl, she's the abandoned baby. She's abandoned in America and raised in an American family. But somehow she still has a thick ass Norwegian accent. Still has a Norwegian accent. <laughs> Maybe she's, she's never, code switching. She's never been to Norwegia. <laughs> but, no, but she didn't even know she was adopted until she's off to college. <laughs> Does she have like a racial memory of being Norwegian <laughs> and just had the accent, even though she was born in Massachusetts, uh, raised in Massachusetts? Maybe it was a Star Trek thing and she had their DNA put in her brain. Yeah. When she had the part that wanted me to taken out, yeah. she had the Norwegian <laughs> accent put in. If you take something like that, replace it with something. Yeah. That's how the brain works. Balance right? in the yeah. universe. Yeah. So um, that's, I could have forgiven that, but. Is is very distracting, and plus the the point that the, she was abandoned in America, it was pointless, and they add like an extra fifteen twenty minutes to the story, but nothing to the enjoyment of it. Yeah, <laughs> and plus it added the extra layer of why does she have this accent? Yeah, she could have been abandoned in Norway and tried to find her birth parents. They're like the only way this movie will sell in America is if there's a direct connection. Yeah. yeah. So, like it, she could have been, like I said, she could have been abandoned in her home country and still try to find her origins. And that's the whole movie. She's like, um, she, she tries to find her birth parents and there's sinister things that are supposedly happening, but they're not a sinister. Uh, oh, what was that movie where uh, Ben Stiller tried to do the same thing? Sinister. No, where he tried to find his birth parents. Oh, oh God. God. Um, ben Stiller and Sinister would have been I know what you're else. talking about. It was directed by David Russell or yeah. Russell. Mm-hmm. Lily, Tom- Lily Tom was in it actually. Yeah. Full Circle. We were just talking about uh, that show. Is the movie called Full Circle? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's like called, it's not Meet the Fockers, because that's, that's not it. But I know no. what you're talking about, because I love yeah. that movie. 
It's got a great cast. I, you can look it up. Ben Stiller orphan uh, movie or Ben Stiller, Ben Stiller biological parent movie. They should just start titling movies that way. Yeah, it'd be easier, wouldn't it? Yeah. And you know right off the bat if you're going to want to go see it or not. Like leave. Yeah. Yeah, you should know that you're not going to watch it. It's already started. It's going to be bad because <laughs> you're going to leave. Um, so where was I? You said Christ. she's Massachusetts uh, by oh, the way yeah, of Norway. And, you know, she try, and she finds her um, uh, birth family by, she takes a, one of those 23 me tests mm-hmm. and it comes out that her DNA is 99% Scandinavian. And that's how she figures out where to go. Scandinavia is a pretty big area, right? Yeah. It encompasses many countries, not just Norway. I don't know how she they narrowed it down to. Well, they say with like Ancestry.com and that now, like it combines. I haven't tried it, but supposedly it'll combine your DNA with like genealogical records too. And can actually pinpoint like pretty close to where you, mm. they think you came from. I don't know how accurate. But she didn't have any records. So like they didn't know where she came from at all. All she was found was with a. She was wrapped in like a blanket with satanic symbols around it, mm-hmm. on uh, it, and a necklace that is like a uh, a Norse rune. Yeah, and that's all she had to go on. And maybe then, a Norwegian metal band like dropped her off. It's probably yeah. she, her parents were in a well, black you, metal band. Yeah, it's yeah. for mention that because that kind of plays into it. Uh, there is like. Um, the director apparently directed Norwegian death metal videos. Oh yeah. And he just shoehorned in this band for no reason. Oh, Again, yeah. the same reason, the same way that her being abandoned in America has served no purpose to the story. Like her, uh, birth parents being in this band served no purpose at all. So the birth parents were in a band. Yeah. Huh. Mm. You, you just assume everybody that lives in Norway is in a metal band. Yeah. I think you're, they are. You're either in, pretty sure. in the band or in the audience. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think most of the audience comes from yeah. like the UK. So, yeah. So basically if you're Norwegian, you have a, you have a black metal band or you hunt trolls. Yeah. Yeah. And let's see. Okay. She eventually finds her birth family and you think that there's going to be this big mystery around it, but it's the big reveal is like, Oh, that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like you think, with like the um, blanket with the satanic symbols and the the runes and everything, that there's gonna be this big cult thing. Yeah. And the review is like, oh, your parent family is just religious. That's it. Uh, oh. Wow. There's no like bigger. Oh, it's a spoiler. Well, spoiler. Well, yeah, it it's terrible. not a recommend. You don't have yeah. to not spoil it. And most of the movie is her just um, with her cell phone walking down hallways, looking for a. Uh, a clues to her past. That's really it. They're just religious. Yeah. How's that a horror movie? It's not. Oh man. Um, <laughs> there's very, it's more of like a, um, suspense, like a thriller, oh. but there's no thrills or suspense. I was about to say, where did the thrills <laughs> yeah. come from? Well, with a from what you've just resol- <laughs> you me of Robert, the David Dick, uh, I would say the hello, hello. Good 13, 13, yeah. 13. Yeah. Like it was a bunch of like twinks is walking down the hallways. Like, hello, yeah. hello. Oh, yeah. It was her just walking down hallways and with a flashlight, mm. uh, just looking through things. Well, there you go. If you're yeah. into that, it was just, it was so boring. It's boring. A Nor- Norwegian looky loo movie. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's a genre that's very specific. It's a yeah. sub genre. That's barely a genre. At and all. when she meets the family, like, um, you think they're like, have these awkward conversations and you think the family's covering up this big secret, but it's very, the, the dialogue is very about them just not knowing each other. Not that they're fact that they're covering up something. If some chick came to your door and said, "Hey, I'm your long lost granddaughter," there'd be awkward conversations. It wouldn't, yeah. You know what I mean? They were probably hoping it would play with like a double meaning. Yeah, so, to what it sounds like to me. Yeah, it's so. This was a movie that wants you to think it's a horror movie until the end. Yeah, and then it's like, psych! It's really nice. <laughs> she found her family, and they're just kind of religious. Yeah. Every now and then, a, a, a ghost pops up, but. That's it. Mm. That's like you maybe buried three, the lead, Andy. There's maybe like maybe three ghost pop ups. Yeah, and that's it. Are they like, <laughs> and that's it? No, the, the ghost keeps saying leave. Oh, that's why the. Uh, but it's called leave. Why the fuck do the ghosts even play into it at all? I don't know. Ghost pop ups are my favorite breakfast pastry. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So yeah, don't I do not recommend leave if you can glean from my review. 
So uh, Andy has subtly trans, uh, telegraphed that he did not care so much <laughs> for leave. Oh, another fun fact. Um, this is my second Norwegian horror movie that I reviewed this year. Yeah. What was uh, the other one? Uh, the Viking one. Did you like The that Viking one? Wolf. It was okay. And Kelly, he reviewed two movies that begin with Un. That's right. Yeah, unheard and unseen, right? Yeah. Next, I just so, need unspoken. Uh, me and Kelly are doing a, uh, have a trend going right now. Well, <laughs> yeah. Let's see if we can keep it going. <laughs> well, what other un movies are there? I had to fill Amy's shoes and pick next week's. Oh what boy! Ooh, is, it, is it? Does it begin with un? No, it's uh, is it Norwegian. <laughs> it's actually, I think it's Mexican. I'm not 100 percent sure that's true, but it's called uh, Huesera the Bone Woman. Oh. Or Hue Sarah, I, I'm not 100% confident in my pronunciation of the title. I, I had this suggested to me on Instagram. Really? It looks good. I, you know, I actually scour. I try to find something I would want to see Yeah. Uh, when I pick these. I don't I don't like being tortured with a movie, personally. No. Uh, I like the title, The Bone Woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Valeria's joy at becoming pregnant with her first child is quickly taken away when she's cursed by a sinister entity as danger closes in and relationships with her family become fractured, she's forced deeper into a chilling world of dark magic that threatens to consume her. A group of witches emerge that could be o- her only hope for safety and salvation, but not without grave risk. Grave risk. And I uh, watched the trailer, and it looks really good. I love witch movies. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, so let's see who's going to watch this thing. Which movies? Witches. Oh, which witch is witch? Witches get stitches. There it goes. The wheel of pain. Oh. Well, what do you know? It's me. That's Freddy. He picked. He basically picked a movie he wanted to watch. And For got myself. It. Yeah. I manifested yeah. that shit. How convenient. Was it, on, it was on your vision board? Yeah. The secret. The secret. <laughs> the secret is yellow modeling clay. Yeah. The secret ingredient. Eggs erroneous. Eggs erroneous. That's right. All right. We'll be right back with uh, Barbarian. Right after... Uh, Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah? This is 476 Barbary, right? Yeah, I'm renting this place. No, I booked it a month ago. Are you sure you have the right place? Yeah. Who are we supposed to do? Why don't you come inside and we'll call these idiots. Why don't you just crash here? Oh, no. I don't know if you got a great look at this neighborhood, but I don't think you should be out there by yourself. It's dry and there's a lock on the door. By the way, I'm Keith. Tess. You take the bedroom and I'll sleep out here on the couch. Perfectly natural. Pretty uh, delightfully misleading trailer. Yeah, well, that's the, this whole movie. And listeners, if you haven't watched this and you don't want to be spoiled, go watch it first. Because now I, I know this is both of your guys' second viewing. For me, this is this would be a hard rewatch 
just because it feels like one of those like one and dones like uh identity for me is a one and done like i i enjoyed it in the moment but once i got to the end of it it's like if i watch this again i'm going to pick at everything yeah i uh i was worried about that uh when I can't remember who suggested this movie. Do you remember? Amy did. It was Amy. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, I don't know if I want to watch it twice. Cause the fun of it is the surprise. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like I actually really appreciated what the, the director, writer, director, uh, Zach Kreger, who is a comedy guy. Hey, it's the Kreger. Uh, <laughs> what he did, I, I guess he originally had that book fears, the gift fears, a gift, I think is the name of it or the gift of fear where it, teaches women hey trust your instincts you know if you're ever in a situation where any ah yeah yeah so the idea was he built i guess he did a short or something that was this setup of the two people accidentally renting the same property yeah and then just creating tension and then when they expanded the idea that's where the batshit part of the basement stuff comes in yeah this is a movie that could have been stopped in its tracks a number of times by a stronger sense of self-preservation or uh, making any number of uh, slightly better decisions, but you don't want that because, of course, yeah, the, the movie doesn't. See, happen. you know, I I do get that too, but I think those same turning points this time for me spoke to kind of the main character, her being very heroic. Uh, this time through, I felt that like where it, it's the stupid horror movie stuff that you're like, what are you doing going back in there? But she literally does try to do the police and everything else. And literally it falls on her to save this guy's life at this point. And I think that was kind yeah. of that. But you think like staying there at all is the, is the staying there at all. Yeah. Is like, don't ever do that. Don't ever. If you get to a place and there is, a person there and they're like oh we double book well, why don't we both stay here that right there if you are like okay and you're you're obviously she doesn't feel good about it but she does it anyway out of desperation that is just not again i'm not saying it couldn't happen but i also feel like this character i'm not trying to pick it apart by the way no no it's good challenge it's good to challenge it anyway i think even even if you pick it apart, it's good. But she's presented, I feel like, as resourceful and heroic. Tess. But, but yes, Tess. But also, like, I just, I have a hard time. Like, I feel like that's a decision that's made by a character who is more lethargic and, ap and who just doesn't feel like dealing with the hassle and would probably feel, I don't know, I just, uh, immediately, I was like, this is dumb like the first like nine things she does yeah are dumb and not just her from the flip if you look at it from uh zarza's guards dart heath heath scars guard whatever it was not a good decision for him if you, you could put the onus on either one yeah. you know what i mean from his perspective let's say he's not a murderer uh -huh. and then someone shows up oh i'm supposed to stay here don't suggest that they stay with you. That's going to get maybe you killed. It's just, it's you know, kind of where I see the motivation in that scene is I do feel like had this, their story not been uh, derailed by finding the secret passage in the basement, that this totally would have been a rom-com and that he, he's a single young single guy. <laughs> it, they, the, you know, he's, 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 he's single and, and into this, this music scene in Detroit. And she's, this young single person who's there to make a documentary about that scene. Sure. I can see that, but I would still have the exact same problem. If I watched that rom-com, I'd be like, yeah, that movie was yeah. cute. But at the same time, that never should have been the decision. Either of them made. He could have cut her throat. <laughs> could have done anything. That would be every rom-com where like the woman goes out on a date with a man alone. And you're like, fucking what the fuck are you doing? Well, yeah, but a date a date is, is, yeah. uh, you know, you, this is a very meat cute situation. Otherwise, <laughs> Yeah, you know, for me. Yeah, I get it. I, I I did feel the the first time through the threat of him because you do build the threat, but he's also got so much charisma. Well, and, that's the and, problem. You know the, who else had a lot yeah. of charisma? Is Ted Bundy. That's true. But Ted Bundy, this guy had receipts that Ted Bundy didn't have. He had like he had emails. He'd be like, look, <laughs> he got emails from his other uh, home away. Home away. He had yeah. the ability to use Photoshop to fake yeah. receipts. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, but that suspicion is that's totally probably more in line with reality what you're saying yeah i have a good sense of self-preservation yeah so and that's the stuff that inspired this is how a guy can get you to let your guard down yeah 
but it if turns. You don't but you do said that. like he read that book about trusting your instincts, and she did, and she was right in a way. He wasn't really a threat. R- well, yeah, but like, like Kelly's saying, conventional wisdom says that he is, and it sets it up, and that's what's great about the first couple acts of this movie. I think, like when she first discovers the passage, um, you you build this trust with him. But, she does, but the audience but, never but, builds but that. But the whole time, she that's she does trust her instinct about not going in there. Yeah, but she lets her guard down when he's at risk, and yeah, and she kicks into like uh, the good person mode and throws away her self preservation to help somebody else. Yeah, yeah. and I, I didn't think she had the instinct that he was harmless. I felt like she was very on edge the whole time and was staying despite her better judgment because well, yeah i do I, I do get some of that but i do think like you are as an audience member i think are much more suspicious of that character than her character is suspicious of him yeah throughout i think like uh, in the beginning i think she is very suspicious yeah. of and, him and plus the fact that he's played by pennywise yeah. right and as as an audience we know that right and that's on purpose we're, we're, we're set up to believe that he's going to be the villain yeah. yeah and you have all that working but as her guard comes down you're like if you've like when I hadn't seen, you know, I don't even want to talk about the the second movie that's in this movie yet, because I think right. like when I saw this, I for sure thought he's going to be torturing her by the end of this movie. And then I'm not going to not like this movie. I don't I thought it was going to be I like Martyrs. I think it's a great movie. But I was really worried this was going to turn into a Martyrs movie. I got gotcha. you where he was the torturing yeah. her. You know? I did think by the time she got down into the tunnel and we'll get to this listeners. I did think that it wasn't going to be what we thought. I was like, okay, well this isn't, I was really hoping that I was right about that because I was like, if he is the killer, then this is just too fucking obvious. And I don't understand why everybody likes this movie. But so I was like, it probably isn't going to be him just because they're really pushing that it is. And then I was like, but sometimes they do that where they make you think they're pushing too hard. And then it just is what you think it is. And I don't want that. And that's not what I got. The triple cross. Yeah, the triple yeah. cross. Yeah. Uh, just like in uh, Strangers on a Train. Yeah. Let's triple it up. Uh, I think, though, their interaction really does get her guard down. But, like, m- m- my guard is not down against him the first viewing until he's killed. Yeah, same. You know, like the whole time I'm like, this is going to turn. He's tricking her somehow. Yeah, even when he is in the tunnel with her and he's saying, we need to go this way. And she's like, no, we need to go this way. Up until the point where he gets his head smashed in, I was still thinking that he's going to be the villain. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it's funny. You talk about like those those risks that you wouldn't take in real life. I found over the years of going to Horror Hound Weekend, I have let myself get into situations that I normally would have been like, no fucking way would I ever do that. Yeah. Um. And stuff's been fine. Obviously, I'm fine. But like, I have like met somebody that very day, and they're like, "Hey, you want to come to my hotel room and uh, yeah, and for chill sure, and talk about whatever." And I'm like, "Yeah, let's go have a couple of drinks in your room. I don't know you. You're in a mask. <laughs> <laughs> you got a knife. I, I don't think it's real, but maybe it's real." Yeah. I well, yeah. I mean, you do find yourself in situation. I mean, that's why it does. Like, it, it doesn't completely destroy your. I mean, everybody probably can think of a situation well, I, like that, but. I have no sense of self-preservation. I'm very trusting of people and I don't want to rock the boat <laughs> by saying like, no, I'm going to leave. Would you have been like, I'm going to stay there with him and <laughs> said, you want to take the bed with me? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can get in there with me. Yeah. Um, well, just real quick to set the scene. So our, our character Tess shows up at this house in Detroit and it is like deep Detroit, but she doesn't realize how bad the neighborhood is is at this point because it is raining so hard and so dark out that all yeah. she sees is this cute house that has been remodeled. Yeah. And that, Slightly that's a remodeled. great yeah. re- reveal in the morning though, when she sees the neighborhood in full light. It is. It is a really great reveal. And then, so she, you know, as you probably gleaned, she gets there and uh, Pennywise is already there and he's like, Oh fuck. Uh, 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 we're both booked. Do you want to sleep here? And she's like, all right. Anyway, <laughs> and then and then and he's a little too insistent on trying to get her to stay. Yeah, well, he he his 
theory is that she's doomed if she stays outside yeah. in her car at night in this neighborhood. And she, again, she doesn't know what that this neighborhood looks like. It's completely bombed out. Right. She just sees the silhouettes at night. And that's another thing I love about this director. I, I think that he was very clever. These are opportunities a lesser director would have just missed entirely. Yeah. It would have been enough to have her show up in the neighborhood and the neighborhood be the way it is. And she goes up there, but he waited to reveal that this is the one house that has been purchased and and we find out later you know completely remodeled by justin long's character you 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 think the whole neighborhood's probably like this house because it's all in silhouette and it's raining and then in the morning they're literally collapsing houses around it right and it's very spooky it is very spooky it's a great setting i love uh destroyed urban horror kind of settings it really adds to like the scene later where she's pursuing her out the basement window. Yeah. And at, at dusk, you know, she doesn't go out in the sunlight. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Like, I do like, I mean, I, yeah. The pan back, the pretty little house, yeah. the white fence and the porch, everything looks good. And then you pan back and she's hanging out that window and the houses all around it are, it's a, looks like a war zone where the police don't even want to go there. It's actually, it's really, it's like the scene from the book It where uh, Eddie Kasprak is trying to get out. Yeah, it's uh, a lot like that. Um, or they're trying to get out the window, I guess. It's the nasty, broken down old house. Yeah, the house on Neapolt Strait. Very, yeah. but uh, it's really, someone hanging out a window with their feet behind them is, is that's, a, that's a real scary, Yeah, that fills you with scare, scare juice. Absolutely bursting with it yeah sorry kelly i didn't want to derail what you, you were, didn't you were going really well with your synopsis oh and well anyway so then they uh you know it, is it the next day that that he's like hey you you got to see this and there's there's tunnels under this house well no, she goes she finds yeah. it because she runs out of toilet paper yeah and, and then he comes back and lets her out of the uh basement and then she said like there's a i found a room and he goes down there looking for him by himself. So Andy made a really great joke. He's the one that doesn't have the self-preservation. No, neither of them do. Where uh you remember we were watching last night and she booked it on Airbnb and she finds the room with the camera and the bed and the bucket. And Andy said Airbnb stands for air bed bucket. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's what she booked it on. Yeah. <laughs> you you went to the wrong Airbnb. Airbnb. Yeah. I had a laugh. I was like, first he made me shrimp. Then he made me laugh. <laughs> that was. Uh, I liked my other joke better about uh, the Beach Boys doing the soundtrack. Oh yeah, bar 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 bar. That's how this she sounds too. Oh, is that kind of why it's called Barbarian? Because of the, so. the well, it's called Barbarian for a few the, reasons. The, the sound that she makes. It's on Barbary Street, so if you live on Barbary Street, you're a barbarian. The other thing was uh, the sound she makes because apparently I was read all the trivia for this. It was like why the barbarians were called barbarians is because their language sounded like ba 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 mm. to everybody yeah. and they started calling them the barbarians cuz they babbled isn't that interesting babbling barbarians the babbling barbarians be a fun goofy band name or bowling league no or bowling league <laughs> for people with head injuries yeah <laughs> very specific it is yeah I did. I was. I, I kept playing with the idea at this first half that it wasn't going that she was going to be the killer, and that it was going to be. When you say the killer, it's funny too that you, the presumption is when you go into this movie, there's going to be someone who's the killer. Well, or the villain. You know, the yeah. the the driving force of uh, of of evil of, of evil in this world, but. Um, because I thought that would be a cool juxtaposition. But that's not what happened. Yeah. They find this fucking tunnel and they find this horrifying room with an air bed and bucket <laughs> and a camera. And um, it definitely looks like a snuff film room. It dev it's it's that's another thing. I love that he like the things that he wants to be obvious are obvious like there's no way you look at this room and don't know what it is unless you're justin long's character which is played for great comedy it's played for great comedy and really uh, enhances <laughs> the shittiness of his character it does it's such great um because when you first andy and me were talking about how both of us when we first saw it, we we're like you're like is this guy really done these things he's accused of he's the hollywood scumbag who's raped some woman or is he being wrongfully accused 
And I think the minute he answers his phone call from his friend, who is the director, yeah. played the buddy, and he says hello f word to him, you're kind of like that's like the first clue that maybe yeah. he's not a good guy. Yeah. But there are still like little nuggets of humanity that he sure. drops throughout the movie that he's not a, such a bad guy. Well, yeah, I feel like they have to do yeah. that, yeah, for you to even give a shit about. Because like uh, when he discovers the old man in the uh, uh, the other room, he's like helpful toward him at first yeah and then he when he discovers the tapes he's like obviously very indignant as he should be <laughs> you know yeah he's appropriately yeah. disgusted with the guy's behavior even though he himself is a rapist yeah and but the, him measuring because he's de- he's he's gonna lose all his money because of this case and him realizing the extra square footage might increase the value of the place and he's so excited when he finds the tunnel system and the kill room or whatever yeah. it is and all that that he just immediately starts measuring the space yeah and its reaction is so the opposite of her reaction to finding the space it's hilarious and um and every time he has the chance to do the right thing and then he turns around and does the exact opposite it's also hilarious because he he's literally he's the definition of like the the guy who does nothing does you know he he's not proactively heroic he's a total self-preservationist yeah and he doesn't think of what he did as rape that's one of the you know he he i think saw it as like he just you know what i mean he thought it was a uh he was like pushing the boundary or you know yeah, and it it's sociopathic like, behavior yeah right? and it's like he can't understand or at first you know he's like i don't think she said no like you you it's a really it's a good comment on sort of me too and un, you know the lack of understanding and like at a very deep level for this character and uh it just was it really it, it just showed like he's um not necessarily malicious but very ignorantly malicious you know and very self-motivated mm-hmm. completely self-motivated well you brought the me too thing it it, it another part where, where it's about believing women there are so many points where she's trying to convince these men to yeah. believe her and they don't believe her. Right. Yeah. Like the room, like she like blatantly stars, describes what, yeah. What she, she's yeah. like t- telling uh Pennywise not to go down there, but he does. <laughs> he, she call, tells the cops to help me out. Nobody believes her. And she keeps, keeps telling Justin Long to like, you know, do what I say to help to uh, preserve, to survive. Yeah. And he won't do it. Yeah. So yeah, nobody no believes her. Yeah. her. Yeah. The, uh, that scene with the cops, that was so frustrating. It's it, a, there are a lot of maddening moments in this movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, you, I've seen it. That happens in real life. I mean, like, it happened with the Dahmer case. Yeah. Like, they returned one of his victims to his house. Well, I think that's what they're referencing, too. I mean, there's a few real sort of stories that they kind of cobble together um, to create yeah. There's, like, a lot so many this. cases about men having these secret rooms and... Like the Cleveland case. Yeah. yeah. Or the guy in, uh, in, over in, uh, or there. Over there. Over there in Scandinavia that kept yeah. his daughter in the basement and had many, many yeah. children with her. Yeah. And then well, you also have these things where the cops, you know, these super Schmidt, poor areas. That, that, yeah. That case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the really poor areas where the cops are like, we don't go there. That, yeah. That's not, that's out of our service area, you know, <laughs> like they use that, but they don't deliberately say that they'll drive out, but then they shut anything that comes yeah. out of the area. It seems like they shut it down They're yeah. like, and get out again, you know? And that's, that's a horrifying thought to think that you just, you know, they think she's just some drug addict or something. Right. And she has literally just escaped from a suburban <laughs> prison cell in a basement and they just drive off. Yeah. So it's really, it's just up to her if to save this guy who doesn't really deserve to be saved. She doesn't know that. And I think that like, that's where I'm kind of like, Oh, I'll cut her some slack. She's doing a Sue Snell. I remember when I was red Salem's lot and yeah. like, she's going up to the, the bar or to the, the Marston house. Yep. And you're like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But it's very heroic. And then, like, in this movie, I felt like she is such a heroic character that... Um, well, at that really point, that. I did understand. Like, once once you got to, to an extent, what I, once you got to uh, what was really going down, then she, you know, you, you almost feel like, you know, you have to be, 
you you don't have to, but like if you're you know a heroic person, I I totally understood her actions after uh, Skarsgård gets killed. Yeah, yeah, I I can see why you're like, girl, get out of there <laughs> in the beginning. But then there'd be no movie. But uh, you know, it could have been a real sexy wrap up too. They don't know they're in a horror movie. No, they don't. They could be thinking they're in a steamy Cinemax. But they still shouldn't sex movie. They shouldn't stay <laughs> with, with strangers. With sex dungeons. <laughs> yeah, they still. Well, I mean, you know, double booked room is kind of a classic uh, porno setup. It is classic. I just uh, well, I guess if you're in a porno, they thought maybe they thought they were in a porno. Maybe they thought they were in a porno. <laughs> you're right. You know. It could be. It could be. If you <laughs> watch some every people, movie, as there's if some the, people with this yeah. could be a porno. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like your motivations. If you take every horror movie you've ever seen, in the act one motivations, and just say, put it through the filter of, do they think they're in a porn movie? Everyone's decisions make a lot more sense. That's true. You know, because everybody thinks around every corner is going to be like what they're into. Hey, we're all getting laid. Yeah. Yeah, when really, even the character, they literally say it in Friday the 13th. Yeah. You know, they think they're in a porno movie. Dumb kids. Yeah. They don't know they're in a horror movie. Whoops. So, yeah, love Barbarian. Yeah, it was, so you find out what it is. Yeah, Justin Long, when he comes in, is, yeah, he's a director. He's been accused of sexual assault. He's trying to fucking get away from from LA and he owns that house but doesn't doesn't know it really like is he the one that that uh had it remodeled cuz i guess yeah. he's the one that put it on airbnb no, i think he just had a bunch of money managers and they did it for him yeah he well, yeah he has a like a property management yeah. company like where he he's complaining about the maid not yeah coming. he didn't realize he had this house i don't think yeah he didn't i don't think knew, know either and then he he goes out there to stay or no, why did he go out there? Because he he, he needed to get away from Hollywood. Because yeah. that, he had to sell his house. That was his last resort to yeah. to uh, try to get as much to money for to fight the case. And right. Everything. So he had to sell the home he had in L.A. to to stay afloat. Right. And his family's in Detroit, and he never even lets them know he's there. Yeah. There's like sequence where he's you know in the house and he's just kind of blowing everything off. So they think everything's normal. Yeah. And it is, I mean, even though I say this is like a one and, and done for me, it is, there are a lot of clever things. It's, it's not a dumb movie. Like it, there are a lot of great things like that just to, that paint his, you know, you get to know who they are. And, uh, I do like that. Do you think it's interesting? Like the third act of this movie is what a typical horror movie's entire story is. Yeah. Where you have the front load of this one where it's act one, act two, you feels feels like a rom com to the point. Well, it's uh, like three different movies. Or a thriller. Yeah. And then you get that third act and they introduce Richard Brake's character, the the guy who owned the house in the eighties and who built the tunnels and all that. Yeah. That's where most people would have written the screenplay starting. And it would have just been about, about the misery of this guy, him kidnapping women, and the misery of them being in there, and then they probably throw her in. Yeah, in well, the it's third like, act. You can't like uh, come out with guns blazing like that. Yeah, I like how they built up to it. Oh, agreed. I I, I love that they never touched on it until that point too, because like I feel like it's almost like it feels arrogant, like in a good way, like where it's his first feature, and he's like, I'm gonna break the fucking rule of. When you, because people try it all the time in low budget movies and it falls apart usually, and you're like, what the hell's going on? Who's this person that just turned up? Right. And that just shows like how good of a storyteller this guy is because I think he's like, I am going to hold this character until the beginning of the third act. I'm going to hold this other character until the second one. And you're going to like, in these three pieces, you're going to piece together this story in a very non traditional way. But he doesn't, he doesn't talk down to his audience. He trusts his audience to fill in the blanks. Yeah. Uh, Like this is not a very gory movie at all. Really? I think the horror for me is what is not shown. Yeah. Like uh, just seeing those, the wall of videotapes with the names on them. (sighs) Yeah. And just like what he called like the redhead from the gas station. Yeah. And just how cold and calculating he was about describing these ladies. That was very chilling. That was one of the best parts about it. And just seeing that video camera on that, that filthy bucket Mm -hmm. and that filthy mattress. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the part where um, Tess is trying to tell Justin Long what to do, just thinking what she had to go through to figure out how to survive down there. Yeah. Uh, and how 
and it shows how smart and resourceful that she is. But she had to say, you, you need to drink the milk. <laughs> so at one point, she, Tess had to drink the milk. Yeah. Yeah. And she's real. You don't, they never say exactly how long she was down there either. Yeah. Right. That's that's kind of a interesting thing they leave to your imagination. You're like, how fucking long has she been surviving on this? Yeah, and she says like uh, milk. When you get upset, she gets upset. So like it, like Tess had to go through a lot of shit down there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The um the other thing you were saying, it's not gory, but when it it does have several very big gore move, yeah. moments, but they save them. Like they're literally to mark turning in the act is the Peter Sarsgaard. Is that who it is again? Did I say get his name right? Just say Sars code. <laughs> Bill. Dark. Bill. I'm going to say Keith. It's Billy. The character's name gets his head smashed against the wall. It's incredibly gory. It is. And when Justin Long's character gets his eyes gouged in, is also. <laughs> or the homeless guy getting his head literally ripped in half. <laughs> yeah. That too. So those <laughs> moments, they have big moments, but like, like you said, like they spare you having to see what the, the, the guy who owned the house originally, yeah. all the horrible shit he did. Which you don't really, you don't, well, most, it's like, I don't um, want to see that stuff, you know? It's like, we, we see Justin Long's reaction to it, and that's all you need to see. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot like True Detective yeah. when they yes. with the tapes and that. It's a great um, tool, I think. It is a great tool. And um, the only thing, I think the only thing that I really even had a problem with was all the knowledge that the uh, that the homeless guy had. He's, yeah. He seemed to have a lot of exposition uh, and and know kind of exactly what was going on and is like how do you know that you know what's funny is i took this movie very seriously the first time through and that third act when she pops up with the moment the baby bottle turned up and it's the big cartoonish baby bottle yeah i was like oh this has gotten stupid but i still kind of like it and we were done with the movie and on balance i was like that's a really good movie you know on balance and now i i feel the silliness so much earlier i guess because it, it, it when they introduce that guy and then they bring him back to reveal that he's the guy who knows what she does at night and kind of yeah. scampers around. I'm like, oh, this is the stuff that makes this really yeah, a I horror like that. story. That was you know? very like yeah. um, night, Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, you know, it the gave guy it some who, mythology. Yeah, who yeah. observes everything and knows, but uh, is a warning people. <laughs> he's the harbinger, but yeah. he doesn't turn up until like the middle of the movie. Totally. And it doesn't ruin it for me. I just thought he had more information than he would have. Well, it's also jarring the first time. Yeah. I think it was super jarring. I was like, it was the one moment where I was like, I think he screwed up here. Yeah. With this whole, this whole, and it was only a few minutes. It's a very short part of it. Yeah. But, but I, I had that same feeling. And this time it, it felt, it didn't feel like that speed bump that did the first time Yeah, where I'm kind of like, cause we were laughing earlier in the movie this time. I think because we were anticipating Justin Long's character, we both started giggling at certain things and they were like, Oh yeah, oh, this is happening. This right. is coming up, you know? And, uh, it was really, it was fun to revisit. I'm glad we did. I wasn't going, I was not, i thought for sure I was going to like downgrade how I felt about this movie on a second viewing. But yeah. It actually it holds, holds up like, better. Like the tension is still there. Yeah. Even though the you know what's coming. Works still. And there's things that I just didn't, didn't realize how good, he, how good the buildup in that movie even was the first yeah. time. I felt it, but the technical side of it, like him standing, uh, Keith is always standing between her and the exit and all this stuff. Like yeah. All those moments and him having his night terror and all that. Like this time through, I'm like, oh man, he really, he dozed, he just doled out moments in a really brilliant way that, you know, most horror movies don't, don't even bother with that level of like kind yeah. of craftsmanship. Well, for me, it was the, one of the, most disturbing parts was when you consider how short the time frame is yeah. for this movie. Um, Cause the, the guy that's kidnapping these people in the eighties and you see all the tapes yeah, and how many people he packed in that time frame. Yeah. Well, and, he was, a, he was a very prolific yeah. uh, murderer and it, who knows how long he was doing it even before the advent of videotapes. Right. Because yeah. you, you can't build those tunnels. I wa it that takes, was, it's going to take me a while. The tunnels was another thing for me that was a little... And again, it's a horror movie, so I'm not I'm not carsing it. But just if since we're reviewing it, if I had to talk about things where I was like, mm, I don't know about that. Uh, the idea that that guy... Because I wasn't even sure that he built them or if they had been there and he found them. Or that was why he chose that house. But 
because it did seem like a very in, like it was very well supported. It was stone tunnels cut yeah. into the cave system. I think he was doing it that whole time. I think when they go to the flashback and you see him go to the store and buy all that stuff. Yeah. And he's talking to the neighbor who says that they're putting a for sale sign up. Yeah. And he says, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. I think he was in the process. Of, he's just like, this doesn't change my plans. I'm going to build this network of tunnels under our neighborhood. Well, no, totally. I just, I felt very un, it felt like you couldn't do that to me. Like I was like, I don't think one person could Look, build that level I mean, of. You're absolutely right. There's no fucking way. And uh, the weirdest coincidence happened after we watched this movie last night. I was laying in bed watching TV. What was it? I might have been watching Mr. Ballin, which is a YouTube channel. And he told the story. Have you, you heard the story about the guy? This is a really sad story that he was building a bunker. He was like a tech guy who made a bunch of money in Bitcoin. And he was building a bunker under his house. It was just like the one in the movie. Yeah. He was building it um, through all the money he made. He had contractors regularly coming out. And eventually he had a fire and a guy he had working on it. A young, like another guy who wanted to be like him, basically. Right. Had, digging tunnels under his neighborhood. Oh Jesus. He, when he brought the guy there, he'd make him wear like fucking blacked out goggles and drive like a circuitous route. He didn't want anybody to know where his bomb shelter was. Yeah. And, uh, it was just like this one of the movies, like a suburban. He I don't know if they knew about this story, if it happened before they wrote the movie or not, but the guy had built this huge thing. And then he had the guy living in the basement tunnel system, at, at a stretch while he was doing work to pay him back for money. He had loaned him for another business for like yeah. an app he was making. And the guy um, was living down there and they had a fire one day and he didn't know the way out. Cause he had blindfolded, you know, he couldn't get out of the system and right. he burned up down there. Oh shit. And uh, the guy was like went to prison for it and everything. The one who hired him. But the story is, if you look up the story, it's an insane story, Yeah, but it mirrors. It's like, the the coincidence that I which I think someone's listening, you know, it feels like the algorithm knew I watched Barbarian and yeah. watched this. Well, that's probably true. But uh, it was very uh, interesting because I'm like I felt the same way where I'm like one guy is not down there no, making I, these tunnels. I feel he did. He took um, he chipped away slowly and put it in his pocket. Yeah, yeah, just like in Shawshank. Yeah, and uh, t walked outside and let the dirt run out while he's talking to his neighbor yeah. about. Uh, he's not going anywhere. He slowly did that over. Yeah. <laughs> not going anywhere, and he's yeah. just dumping a little bit of dirt yeah. out of time. But I it do should, feel in the world like of the movie, I feel like he's the one. When yeah. I say he did it, I think they're they're saying he just did I it. I got you. That whole time. I, in reality, fuck no. And it way. didn't bother. And like I said, it didn't it didn't hurt it. It just in if if I'm yeah, if you're looking at it strings, from like, a, yeah. yeah. Like I said, like if you pull out the strings of this movie, it would fall apart right yeah. away. Because well, there's you, a lot of leaps. How you know? strong she is and uh, her physical strength doesn't and, make and the any fact sense. that it took that the span of forty years of inbreeding to get to her. Yeah, it would have taken lo a lot longer, I think, to get to that level of mutant. Yeah. Well, the science behind it. Yeah. Who knows. I think the arguments I read was that he was clearly having, as soon as his victims were menstruating, he was raping them and then raping subsequent generations of his own daughters. When I do feel like, well, yeah, there's that. And I mean, you, she wouldn't even have to be a mutant for her. Like if, if you didn't teach someone to talk and you kept them down there and you repeatedly raped them and you know, you kept them around they might not talk and they, you know what I mean? You yeah. fuck up somebody's brain that way. Well, like if you want, it reminded me of the um, home episode of X-Files. Yeah. It took gener like for since the civil war of inbre inbreeding for them to get to that level of strength. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So why stronger? I feel like I don't know. it's like, it's such it, a fun, it feels like cause the story, they have yeah, to be it's, stronger. It's a horror you know? trope like incest strength. Yeah. Yeah. If you're an inbred hill person, yeah. you get her super strong. Because God doesn't take with both hands. No. He's like, if I'm going to give you this big, crazy set of floppy yeah. titties and a merkin that hangs <laughs> down to your legs, I'm going to give you some good opera body. No, that strength. was another like uh, effective scene where uh, Justin Long is in the room with the uh, the kidnapper guy. And then the late, the barbarian lady, she stops. She doesn't go in the room. Cause she's, she's scared of him. Because she's scared yeah. of him. Yeah. Yeah. No, she, it was really good. Like the, I thought they handled that whole thing really well. Yeah. I mean, it's a bizarre ass movie. Yeah. It's kind of hard to look at it for, as anything other than like a very strange, like shuffled story. 
it feels like Pulp Fiction sometimes, like the way, you know, that same kind of breaking the narrative thing to me. Mm-hmm. Um, not as good, not done as quite as well, but obviously I just, I love where they kind of moved the bits around. Yeah. Oh, I get you. I just like novelty. I'm a sucker. Novelty you suckers. Sucker. I'm a novelty like giant sucker. suckers. <laughs> <laughs> All day ones. All right, we don't know what our movie is for next week yet, but we will figure that out. We don't know. Um, we want to thank our Beals the Bubs. Did you guys have anything else to say about? Barbarian? Yeah, I think we've gone along enough. Long yeah, than yeah. Nothing it just to. felt like the natural conclusion. Yeah, we don't have yeah. Amy here to rein us in, so we can yeah. just say whatever now. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Elise. Thank you. I'll see you soon. I hope you had fun at the Baba. Yeah. The beauty, the beautician, uh, the beauty shop, Ernie. My gentleman from Texas, mm-hmm. Jeremy Cassie and Gamora. Yo, yo, yo. Jeff L. I own a good one. I own a great one. Brandon and Emily. Travia Whitehead. Bill Chandler. Blaine Turner. Monica Martinson. Paul Gautier. Brian Krause. Alyssa Bame. Dave Siebert. And Joe Jovlin. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Thank Boom. you. Without you. It's weird to hear you read them. The it's list backwards. W- it's weird to read them at all for me now. I haven't done it in so long. Plus so, I'm, so you off-putting. Know. You know, so it's just like, it's like marbles in my mouth. <laughs> like ba 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 If he should go to bed When his old boy